Hi, my name is Robert Janae, and today I'm going to teach you three ways to use time remapping in your clips so you can do cool things like this. Oh, God! That was a terrible bit. <laughs> Now using time remapping is a really effective way to kind of bring motion and energy to shots that otherwise wouldn't happen. So one thing you've got to remember before using time remapping in your projects is that the shot has to at least be in 60 frames per second. When you slow down a shot, you don't want it to skip and uh, just jump around, which it would if you shot in 24 frames per second. But when you shoot in 60 frames or 120 frames per second, whenever you slow down footage, it will still keep that same pace that a 24 frame per second shot would. Now, I don't want to waste your time, so I'm going to try to get through all three of these steps as quick as I can. So, let's get started. So the first way you can time remap your footage is using the speed and duration tab on your footage. So this is the effect most people use to speed up or slow down their footage, but if you don't know how to use it, here's a quick overview. So I'm going to drag my clip into the timeline, and all you're going to do is just right click and then go to speed and duration. And now you're going to have a text box that pops up with the speed and duration that you can adjust for this clip. Now if you don't know the difference between speed and duration, speed is the rate of which the clip plays, and duration is the actual length of the clip. So if we want to speed up this clip, all we have to do is increase the percentage. So I'm going to go to 200. Now the clip is twice as fast. If you want to slow it down, just go back to speed and duration, and then you can go 50, and now it's going to play half as long as it did in its original format. So say you have a clip that you're trying to fit into a certain amount of seconds. Say it's only 5 seconds long, but you want it to be 7 seconds. This is where you can use duration to change the properties of that clip and make it a bit longer. So here it says my clip is 113 seconds long, and I want it to be 200 frames long. So I'm going to press OK, and it's going to extend it to the amount of time that I specified. So it can fit directly into a certain amount of time that you need. With that, number one, complete. Bam! Okay, let's go on to number two. Number two, changing the frame information. So changing the frame information means slowing down your clip by going into the settings of the clip and actually slowing it down by changing the actual frame rate of your clip. You're gonna have a clip that's recorded in something higher than 24 frames per second, such as 120 or 60 frames per second. You're going to right click that clip and you're going to go to modify and then interpret footage. Up top, you're going to see a frame rate box, and then you're going to change the assumed frame rate, click that in, and change that to 23.976. Press OK. So it's going to take your 120 FPS shot and spread it out so that all the frames are accounted for, but it's playing at 24 frames per second. That way you're not losing any quality of your shot, but still slowing it down, and as you can see, it looks really, really good, and there's no bumping or anything like that. It's just effectively slowing it down to the lowest it could possibly go before it starts skipping. And number two, complete. And now on to number three, which is my favorite, keyframing. Keyframing is the way that you're going to be able to use speed ramping, which I think is the coolest use of time remapping feature. So I have my clip here that I'd slowed down previously by changing the frame information, and I'm going to drag a selection of it in my timeline. I'm going to drag it out just a bit. So I want this clip to speed up right until she starts spinning. So I'm going to mark right there. But then when she finishes the spin, I want it to go back to regular speed. So I'm going to mark back there too. So now I'm going to start keyframing. To do that, drag up your clip a little bit to expose it. Right click, go to show clip keyframes, time remapping, speed. Now it's going to have a little rubber band there that you can adjust the speed by putting pins in and raising and lowering the actual speed of the video without having to go into time duration box. We have these markers and I'm going to mark exactly where I want the clip to speed up and slow down. So I've got it here and here. So the middle is already slowed down. You can already see that this is the speed that I wanted to be at uh, whenever I want it to be in the slow part, but these are the sections that I want it to speed up. So I'm going to take this tool and I'm going to increase it to 400% because if you record in 120 frames per second, that means that you need to increase it by 400% to match it to 24 frames per second. Quick math. Now it's going to play at normal speed and go into the slow-mo. And now I'm just going to match it onto the other side by going to 400. So now I have my clip play at normal time in the beginning, 
and then it slows down for the spin and it goes right back to normal speed. So right now the transition between fast and slow is a really hard cut and I really want to kind of ease it in to the slow-mo part and ease out. That's the whole tenet of speed ramping. So how you would get that actual ramp is right here in your timeline. You're going to go to this little bar right here and you're going to extend it and it's going to give yourself a little ramp and it's going to slow down the footage incrementally. So as it travels down this ramp it's going to go into the slow-mo part without having a hard cut. A way to make it even smoother is to add a slope to that ramp. To do that you'll click on one of the bars here and you'll see this little uh, dot with two arms. If you click one of the dots and rotate it you'll see this little curve form into your thing. Now you can have a really smooth transition into your slow-mo footage. And you can do the same over here by just clicking the little arms, turning it, and now you got two waves in your footage. Looking great. So that's it. That's three ways to use time remapping for your footage. If you have any questions, leave a comment below. Make sure to like, subscribe, you know the drill, and we'll see you next time.